Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Step Lancer and how they recently rose to a pretty high popularity in Age of Empires 2 tournaments. Now the idea with the Step Lancer is that when the game first came out, when Definitive Edition first came out and the Lancer was introduced, it was completely broken. Players kept abusing it by stacking 30 Lancers on one tile, the unit attacked very fast, it was very cheap, easy to mass, and it was pretty much a overpowered unit in every sense of the word and pretty much everyone who could have access to step lancers had an immediate advantage over their opponent. However, since then, step lancers have received a variety of nerfs that really took them out of the meta. And then recently, they got a few buffs and a few sib bonuses to help step lancers be a little bit more popular. But none of these buffs immediately saw step lancers return to play. However, recently, in the past couple tournaments with Red Bull Legacy and the re very recent Warlords tournaments, we actually saw step lancers make several appearances in the tournament games, and players are now very heavily respecting what the step lancers can bring to the table. However, they fill a completely different role than what they filled when they first came out. Players are not heavily committing into 30 or 40 step lancers in Castle Age and waiting to upgrade them in Imperial Age. That is not the purpose of step lancers. Instead, they're using it as a quick Castle Age power spike to put pressure on the opponent and to use the high mobility, easy to micro characteristics of the step lancer to gain map control instantly and to look for an early Castle Age push. It's not to say that this unit is bad in massed, it's just that it's very hard to get to massed step Lancers because if you start to really commit to Step Lancer, they have some obvious counters. They're not that great against Archer units in general. So if the guy has a big ball of crossbowmen or some unique unit Archer, uh, it's going to be very hard for the Step Lancer to find damage against that, especially when they pick up Ballistics. And the Step Lancer also has a very weak elite upgrade. It's very expensive and it doesn't give the best amount of stats. So going to late game, Step Lancer is just not that viable. However, there are a lot of things that make the Step Lancer really good in early castage. I'm going to run through some of them right now. Now the first one is the fact that it's cheaper than a knight. A step lancer costs 70 food and 40 gold, so it's really easy to afford after a very short feudal age. If you open archers with mongols or maybe a scout rush or something with cumins, it's very hard to then afford two stable knights in castle age. You're gonna make a few knights and then you're gonna have to cease production. So while the knights are a really powerful unit in castle age, if your opponent's fully walled, you're not gonna really get a lot of value. And so that's why step lancer kind of rose to popularity as far as an early castle age power spike, especially with the mongols, because you can get up to castle age really fast due to the hunt bonus and smooth feudal age and then you get to castle age and then what can you afford knights are not a bad option don't get me wrong but step lances just pack a little bit more of a punch for cheaper costs especially on gold 40 gold very very affordable and you don't need to have like eight or nine bills on gold to afford two stables you can probably just be fine with six if you mine as you're going up to castle age the next thing that makes the Step Lancer pretty solid as well is the fact that it's very easy to micro. I touched on this before, but the way that you micro Step Lancers is the same way you basically micro a ranged unit. You have a group of four to six of them, and then you hit with their Lance, which has one range, and then you run away. This is extremely good versus melee units. So if you've got Knights chasing you, you don't sit there and fight the Knights because the Step Lancer has a very long reload time of three seconds. So what you want to do is attack the Knights, then run away. And if the Knight decides to chase you, you can then turn around and attack the knight and then all six step lancers will hit the knight at the same time but even if your opponent has like several knights they're going to be bumping on each other and only one of them can get a proper hit or maybe two of them on the step lancers and so as you can see once you get into your opponent's base and your opponent's on knights or any other cavalry unit or even melee units the step lancers can easily hit and run to do damage to these units while avoiding the incoming damage versus pikemen it's even worse the pikemen will literally never be able to hit your step lancers if you play with close to perfect micro it doesn't even have to be that perfect you have a pretty big window where you can attack the pikemen, run back, and the pikemen never hits you. So in early game, when you can focus a lot of your attention on the micro, especially in the hands of a top player, the step lancers are actually extremely hard to deal with if you're on melee units. Now, of course, this dynamic completely changes if you've got, you know, ranged units to defend the step lancers. If I've got crossbowmen and my opponent's on step lancers, it's going to be pretty easy to deal with them if he tries to find my army. But then again, the step lancer player can easily just run around the crossbowmen, use his superior mobility to raid my villagers, make games messy, and even follow it up with siege and use siege and step lancer to push my base, the siege will deal with the crossbows effectively and the step lancers can deal with everything else. Another reason why the Step Lancer is very strong in early Castle Age, and for me personally, this is the biggest reason as to why this unit is so dangerous. And it's the fact that it can easily break through palace head walls when you have six to eight Lancers. This is a really big point in favor of the Lancers in, in comparison to the Knights. If my opponent has six Knights outside my walls, it's pretty easy. As soon as you start setting a wall, I'll send a villager that's close by and just make a house behind it. Pretty simple. You can only get like three Knights to attack the same palace head wall, so it's pretty easy to, you know, build behind it and keep yourself safe. However, with Lancers, you 
you can have like six or eight lancers attacking the same wall because of that one range. And so your opponent in early cast stage can mass a few of these guys, pick a wall, and pretty much three shot it with his lancers and then run in. To make matters worse, even if you start walling behind with houses or palisades, he can use all eight lancers to attack the foundation of the rewall and break it really fast because he's got so much damage coming down. You don't have enough time to rewall with one or two villagers because you simply don't get enough HP on the buildings to outbuild lancers attacking your wall. It's such an insanely strong unit at breaking through your defenses, breaking through your walls, that you almost are forced to have a lot of military out on the field to deal with these guys because they will break in if their opponent is competent. The worst part about the fact that they can break through walls like this is imagine if your opponent's up to cast stage faster. He's got a bit of a lead going into cast stage. You're still in feudal age and your opponent is suddenly breaking through your walls with step lancers. Not only do you have to deal with the step lancers inside your base when you're still in feudal age, but your opponent can then continue to flood his units into your base because now you're completely open. It's a very tricky unit to deal with and it actually takes some good preparation in advance. I guess some pre-walling, maybe two layers of palisade or houses behind your initial layer of palisade to stop the lancers from breaking in. And that's just simply not the way to go in most games. It's, it's too expensive to do that. And so the threat of step lancers are always going to be extremely strong. They're either going to force you to wall up a lot or they're going to break into your base and do a lot of damage. The last thing worth mentioning for the Step Lancers is that there's a lot of absurd bonuses associated to the Step Lancer that never really saw play before but are now seeing a ton of play. And the biggest bonus towards Step Lancers is the Mongo bonus, which gives a good amount of health towards the Step Lancer and makes it really strong in early castleage. It, this bonus is similar to the Light Cav bonus that the Mongols get. Of course, it's the same bonus applied to both units. However, for Light Cav, you need to actually get an upgrade. So that power spike kicks in later. And Light Cav is not as powerful as, of a unit as the Step Lancer is. And so for all these reasons the step lancer is definitely just a very superior castleage unit in certain situations especially early castleage compared to light cav or knights however i want to end this video by saying that it's not overpowered i'm not making this video to call for a nerf for the step lancer quite the opposite i actually feel like the step lancer is a great addition to the game because now there's more things to think about there's more options for certain civilizations and the step lancer for example is pretty much the ultimate counter to eagle warriors where you can hit and run the eagle warriors all day you do a ton of damage to them and they can never get their hits off on you and it's also really good against monks. So mesosivs will struggle uh, against step lancer civs. And that's a really good mechanic for the game to have, you know, a certain unit that does really well against another unit to make people think instead of just going brain dead into their best units like they do in other matchups. It's a very healthy state for Age of Empires to have different units that have their place in the game. And I think that there are ways to stop step lancers. It's not like they're overpowered or anything. And so it's really just like they're strong, they're useful, but they're not OP. And that's a perfect place to have this unit. And uh, I think as time goes on, we might see them kind of continue to rise in the meta or maybe start to fall off as people prepare for them. We'll see how that goes, but that's pretty much it for now. Thanks for watching the video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.